Hello, my name is Alexandria Minch, and I'm a technical marketing engineer for Cisco SD-WAN. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to deploy SD-WAN controllers on-premise. This video will cover the deployment workflow for a standalone vManage in single tenant mode with one vSmart and one vBond. For on-premise controller deployment, controllers are run on server hardware and deployed as virtual machines or containers on ESXi or KVM. For this video, I will be deploying and hosting the controllers on an ESXi instance on a UCS server. To start, navigate to Cisco Software Central at software.cisco.com to download the images for each controller. Here you will find the software image for each controller. The VEDGE cloud corresponds to the VBond controller. For deployment on ESXi, we will use the VMware images. Download the image for each controller. Next, navigate to ESXi and create virtual machines using the downloaded OVA file for each controller. Thick provisioning is recommended and uncheck the power on automatically box since we will need to edit some settings before power on. Repeat the process to deploy the VMs for the remaining two controllers. For vManage, add an additional hard disk drive with sufficient capacity for the vManage database. For my lab environment, 100 gigabytes will be sufficient, but in a production environment, much more would be required. For all of the virtual machines, be sure the correct network adapters are selected for your interfaces and add appropriate CPU and memory resources based on your system requirements. Power on the virtual machines and log in using the default username admin and the default password admin. The vManage will prompt you to select the storage device to be used for the vManage database. Choose the new disk you created. Once you confirm, the system reboots and will come back up in a few minutes. Log in to the other two VMs as well. Once logged into all of the controllers, it is time to configure basic connectivity on the controllers. Parameters for the system and VPN0 will need to be configured to achieve basic connectivity. For system parameters, configure system IP, site ID, organization name, and vBond hostname or IP address. While I will be using the IP address for my small lab setup, it is best practice to use the vBond hostname. If you are using the hostname, be sure to define a DNS server or static DNS host entry in VPN0 so that the hostname can be resolved. The system IP is an IP address used internally by the network to identify each device. This is unique for each controller. The site ID is a numeric identifier of the site and must be the same for all devices that reside in the same site. For this deployment, I've assigned the same site ID to all three controllers. Lastly, the organization name must be identical for all devices and it must match the name and the certificates for all devices. For the VBond controller, use the local keyword with the VBond command to indicate that the local device is acting as the VBond controller. For VPN0, configure the transport VPN, a default route, and an IP address. Configure the controller's transport VPNs to accommodate the control connections. vManage and vSmart both require tunnel definitions, however, no encapsulation configuration is required. While vBond does not require a tunnel interface, it's recommended that you configure one in order to secure that interface. When configuring the vBond with a tunnel interface, you are required to configure an encapsulation since it is a vEdge image. However, regardless of the encapsulation type, the vBond will use DTLS for its connections to other SD-WAN devices. Configure the services that are allowed to run over the WAN connection in VPN0 for each of the controllers. By default, DNS, ICMP, HTTPS, and DHCP are allowed. Be sure to allow SSH and NetConf so that adding the devices to vManage and certificate installation will be successful. 
In addition, it is recommended that NTP be configured as it is important for the controller clocks to be synced. When finished with the configurations, be sure to commit the changes. vManage can now be accessed on port 8443 using the IP address of the VPN0 interface and the credentials configured. Please note that you may need to wait several minutes for the vManage GUI to be ready after the initial setup. Navigate to Settings under Administration and configure the organization name and VBond information. The organization name is case sensitive and must match the controllers exactly. For the VBond information, you may use either the domain name or IP address configured previously. Keep the default port number of 12346. If we go back to the dashboard, we can see that the other controllers have not yet been added. Let's go ahead now and add the vBond and vSmart controllers to vManage. Navigate to Devices under Configuration and click the Controllers tab. Click Add Controller and add both the vBond and vSmart. Fill in the appropriate IP addresses and credentials for each and uncheck the Generate CSR box for now. All controllers should now show up in the controller device list, however you won't see any information associated with them yet. Now it's time to install the certificates. There are many certificate options available, but this video will focus on manual signing with Cisco PKI. With this option, certificate signing requests are manually submitted to the Cisco Plug and Play cloud service where the certificate is signed. The resulting certificates can then be downloaded from the Plug and Play Connect portal and manually installed in vManage. This option requires vManage version 19.1 or higher. To start, we need to change the certificate setting in vManage. Go back to Settings under Administration and scroll down to Controller Certificate Authorization. Change the certificate signing by field to Manual and click Save. Next, we need to generate the certificate signing request for the controllers. Navigate to Certificates under Configuration and click the Controllers tab. We'll do vManage first. On the right-hand side, click on the ellipsis and select Generate CSR from the drop-down. A pop-up window will appear with a certificate signing request. Copy the CSR. Now the CSR needs to be submitted to the certificate authority to be signed. Navigate to software.cisco.com and scroll down to find the Plug and Play Connect portal. Click Certificates and Generate a Certificate. Fill out the information and paste the CSR for vManage that was copied previously from the vManage GUI. Review and Submit. A message will indicate that a certificate was successfully requested, and once the processing is complete, the status will show as completed. Once ready, click the down arrow to download the signed certificate. Now the signed certificate is ready to be uploaded and installed manually in vManage. Go back to vManage and click Install Certificate. Find the certificate file that you would like to upload and click Install. Install certificates for the remaining two controllers by repeating the same process.
Now that the controller setup and certificate installation is complete, all information should be populated in the controllers list. The vManage dashboard should indicate that all three controllers are up and reachable. Additionally, the dashboard should indicate that there are no invalid certificates. This now completes the process for deploying SD-WAN controllers on-premise on an ESXi host. Thanks for watching.